Now, it seems uh, that younger Singaporeans want the government to be more involved in a host of new issues that have emerged. According to a study by the Institute of Policy Studies, a large majority of Singaporeans are aware of the seriousness of race and religious issues. But fault lines have emerged on class, immigration and LGBT rights. The study found that if mismanaged, these issues are seen to impact Singaporeans' trust in the government the most, compared to race and religion. Joining me now is senior political correspondent Grace Ho. Hello, Grace. Hello. So my first question to you is, what's new about these results? Well, first let's start with what's not so new, which okay. is um, that most Singaporeans, a large majority of mm. them, are actually very familiar uh, and sensitized with race and religion issues. Right. So, um, well, it, it, it just goes to, sh to show that national education, you know, to some That's extent, right. has worked here, right. as well as some of the harder legislation, like your Maintenance of Religious Harmony Act. Right. Yeah. Um, but, but I think what's interesting is that for uh, newer fault lines like class and immigration and LGBT issues, uh, the younger Singaporeans actually feel that there ought to be more state involvement mm. as well as public discussion. So um, these issues also, about 40% of them feel that if these issues are not managed well, it would actually affect their trust levels in the government right. as well as their sense of national identity. Um, and, and this is a much higher percentage than, say, on race and religion. Right, yeah. 40% is, is a significant... It's pretty significant, yeah. So it, perhaps, I mean, on, on a broader level, the researchers in the study were saying that uh, it may well be that people already feel that the government has very robust frameworks and mm. policies in place for race and religion, right. and so they'd like to kind of pivot to other issues like class and immigration, where they feel that the government can do more. Right. It's an in, uh, interesting take on, on the study. And in fact, the study actually says uh, that younger uh, respondents called mm. for greater public discourse and government involvement, as you mentioned yeah. earlier. So what does that uh, look like exactly? Well, I think for the younger respondents, uh, they want to go beyond not just public discussion, mm. but to actually personally take action. Right. So one of the survey questions that was posed to them was, if you received a phone message or an email um, saying that a particular business discriminates against someone of a particular race and religion, how would you respond? And two thirds of those who are aged 18 to 25 said that they would ask their friend, you know, who forwarded this to them, uh, what was this about, and try and find out the source of this information. Compared to about half of the respondents who were aged 65 and above, mm. so this means that um, to a certain extent they, they are more aware of, say, uh, race or religion, you know, issues, mm -hmm. and uh, feel that they, I mean, they feel more strongly about discrimination. But it could also mean that going forward, um, the younger generation prefers to take a more community-based and personal approach to these issues rather than top-down government policies and legislation. Right, so they're the ones that are sort of truly involved in this, sort yes. of ground up, in a ground-up kind of way. Yeah, and, and this kind of extends to um, another example, which is in the area of LGBT issues. Mm -hmm. So um, more than half of them would actually say that uh, th these issues could, if not managed well, would cause a greater anger and polarization you know, against particular communities in Singapore right. uh, compared to, let's say, the, um, the older Singaporeans and the ones who are less educated. So, um, particularly in, you know, on issues like, let's say, LGBT rights, uh, equal rights, mm -hmm. or let's say the repeal of Section 377A of the Penal Code, um, they feel more strongly about this than older Singaporeans. But, but if we just go move away from the, the whole younger and older, younger versus older demographic, mm -hmm. and we look at Singaporeans in general, what's kind of interesting is that six out of ten of Singaporeans actually feel very uncomfortable with religious people or religious leaders um, speaking out strongly uh, on, say, on LGBT issues. Oh. So, well, the, the, the reasons are not completely clear, mm -hmm. but what the study um, surmised was that um, the Singaporeans are generally um, sensitized to how these issues are quite, quite, I mean, religion and politics, you know, don't mm -hmm. mix, you know, and, right, right. and that, 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 that attests to the, the success of government policy where the clear lines have been drawn between the two. Um, but also, there is a certain polarization if we go by religious lines, for instance. Mm -hmm. So the uh, Christians and Muslims, uh, close to 50% of them, uh, would actually be um, desirous of more state intervention, but for very different reasons. Oh. So for the younger Singaporeans, they would mm -hmm. say, well, yeah, because you know, we don't want discrimination, whereas the, um, the religious ones, would, more religious conservative ones, would say, right. we want more state involvement because we want to hold the line 
on the status quo. Flip of a coin. Yeah. So like no 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 repeal of three seven seven A. Um, you know, we don't really want the Ping Dot rally and things like that. So this is definitely one area where you do see a fair degree of polarization compared to the other issues, even like class, immigration, race and religion. And going forward from the policy perspective, it may mean that it has to be managed very, very sensitively, depending on which demographic you're actually addressing. I see. Well, this is yeah. fascinating stuff. Thanks for uh, sharing more Thank with you. us, Grace. Uh, and if you'd like to read the full article with all the numbers and details and everything, do head on to our website. That's straightstimes.com. And those are our top news of the day. Uh, for more news and videos, do head on to our website. Once again, that's straightstimes.com. This has been Kimberly Jiao. Thank you for watching The Big Story, and we'll see you tomorrow. Mm -hmm.